Released March 20, 2006, Oblivion was celebrated as one of the greatest games ever made, but even masterpieces have bugs, and these glitches quickly made their way to online forums where players were eager to try them out. One such glitch was with the paintbrush, an item with no purpose in the game except to be sold, but just 12 days after release, a player would post to the Speed Demos archive forum that the paintbrush had a very bizarre property. When it was dropped from your inventory, instead of falling to the ground, it would float in mid-air, so it appeared the developers forgot to activate physics on the object. However, it still had collision, so players could jump on it and use it as a platform. The SDA post outlined that this trick could be repeated if you had additional paintbrushes, with the poster theorizing that this could be used to create a stairway to get to the tops of buildings, but they didn't see any applicable use in a speedrun for the trick. These are famous last words in speedrunning, and it wouldn't be long before players started exploring with paintbrush staircases, and what they found was groundbreaking. It's unclear exactly who found it or when, but when exploring with paintbrush platforms, someone tried to get to the top of the Temple of the One in the Imperial Capital, and they discovered that the objects on top of the structure had no collision, so they fell down inside. Normally, you'd use the door to load the inside of the temple, but since players fell in through the roof, there wasn't anything except the structure itself. And to everyone's surprise, there was a door stuck halfway in the ground that stated it led to the Temple of the One. On the other end of this door was something nobody expected, a culinary experience unlike no other, courtesy of HelloFresh. HelloFresh is a subscription-based meal kit delivery service that sends prep-ready food right to your door. Each recipe is broken down step by step, so you never feel overwhelmed when cooking, with every meal taking around 30 minutes or less to complete. And if you can hit the tricky potato skip, you're in for a huge time save in the HelloFresh speedrun. They cater to all types of diets, with veggie, pescatarian, and wholesome meals that make hitting your nutritional goals simple and easy. I received the pan-seared steaks with butter parsley potatoes, and they are delicious, with the steaks packing a ton of flavor. Use my link or go to HelloFresh.com and use code POGABISSOCT65 for 65% off plus free shipping on your first box. Once you click, my description will live update to count up the purchases. And with that, let's get into the video. Convenient segues aside, this hidden door perplexed players, and when they loaded through, they were indeed taken to the Temple of the One, except it was in its endgame state. At a certain point in the main quest, the Daedra attack the royal capital and the entire city changes, and this door seemingly took them to this part of the quest, without having to do any of the other steps. If you are progressing the intended way, you need to fight your way through the capital to the temple while escorting an NPC named Martin. Once he's inside, all you need to do is talk to him and the final cutscene will trigger. You're probably thinking early speedrunners use this door to warp to the end of the game and then trigger the final cutscene, but there's one big problem. Since you haven't completed any of the main questline, Martin is all the way in Kavach. This should have been a dead end, but the developers included a hitbox in front of the temple that makes Martin start walking to the player's location. You're currently level 1, so defending him along his journey isn't viable. However, once you're inside of the temple, the game disables enemy combat, which lets Martin make his pilgrimage in peace. Kavach is 12 in-game hours away by walking, so players use the pass time feature to speed up his arrival. And once he's there, all they do is initiate a conversation, and the final cutscene will play. This was only possible due to the trigger volume the devs put in front of the door. It was likely created to ensure the player couldn't get lost on the quest once they started it. And when everything was figured out, the first speedrun was put together before the game was even a month old. The video link and person who performed the run have been lost to time, but based on details from the SDA forum, we can gather that it used the paintbrush glitch to get to the hidden door and a duplication glitch to create the paintbrushes instead of looting them from the world. Duplication in Oblivion isn't hard to perform. All you need to do is find at least two of the same scroll, equip the scroll from your inventory, double tap A directly after equipping it, then go to the item you want to duplicate and drop it from your inventory. If done correctly, you'll now have a number of that item equal to the number of scrolls you had in your inventory. This saves a ton of time from gathering the paintbrushes by hand, 
and the first run from April 17th, 2006 clocked in at 13.29. But, as is always the case in speedrunning, things evolve, and in June, a player named The Void would discover a method of climbing great heights that didn't require paintbrushes. He named the trick item jumping, and to execute it, all you needed to do was drop an item in the air, then jump on it, then perform another jump and pick it up while you're gaining height. This process could be repeated infinitely, but was difficult to chain together, with The Void stating it may be too difficult to pull off in a speedrun. So naturally, he uploaded a video the next day showing that he had managed to climb to the top of a house. It would be a year before anyone picked up the any% percent run and incorporated the faster item jump method, but Zevro would do just that on March 28, 2007 just shy of a year before the previous record, and he shaved an entire two minutes off the time. The record then went dormant for seven years before it would be lowered again, when Ansem took an entire minute off of Zevru's time using a glitch that was discovered on pure accident. Prior to Ansem's record, players and runners in the Oblivion community were using a mod called Blockhead that allowed them to quick save and quick load without opening a menu. They used the mod because saving and loading was very tedious in the vanilla game, and fortunately for them, it led to the biggest discovery in Oblivion history. Sometime in November of 2013, a group of players using this mod would discover that when you load a save file, the game gives you a brief instant of movement as you load in before it loads the rest of the world. This allowed players to position themselves near walls and doors to get out of bounds before the world loaded and became known as a save clip but it wasn't the only glitch they found. If getting over walls with paintbrush staircases was thought slow and replaced with the much quicker item jumping, what's the next logical step for moving fast? Instead of moving between two points, speedrunners found a way to teleport. They named the glitch load warping because it abuses the save system, and despite exploiting a complex feature, the explanation is easy to understand. The first step is to sit in a chair and save the game, then make your way to a door that triggers a load screen and pause the game on the same frame you activate the door. On the pause screen, you'll load the save where you were sitting in the chair, and when the file loads, you'll be teleported to a different location in the room on the other side of the door you just activated. The teleport location isn't random. Each area in Oblivion has coordinates unique to itself. The player coordinates from the chair save get applied to the coordinate layout of the new area, and this is where your character ends up when you load in. These two glitches are incredibly powerful, and when tried without the mod, they both worked on console and PC, but the task of slotting them into a speedrun wasn't easy. The first record by Ansem using these glitches has been lost to time, so it's hard to figure out exactly what he did, but if we look at the next record set by Matumbro, we see the early game gets completely rerouted. If we look back at Zevro's record from 2007, we see that it took him almost 7 minutes of the 9 minute run to get out of the tutorial level in the sewers, and this would be where the bulk of the time save came with the new glitches. The intro involves a lengthy escort quest where you need to help the Emperor escape the sewers while being attacked by assassins. It teaches the player how to use keys for doors and the basics of combat, but these are just hurdles for speedrunners to overcome, and across 2014, Matumbro and Findus Khan would search for ways to skip these sequences. We'll save the history for another video. For now, let's look at the current record and see how it all comes together. At the start of the game, players do two important things, pick and use Adrenaline Rush to increase their speed, and save while sitting in a chair to set up a later load warp. Once that's complete, they perform the first save clip of the run except it's a bit different. Due to how optimized the route has become, a normal save clip won't cut it for the first out-of-bounds trick. Instead, runners drop wrist irons and the sackcloth sandals in a precise location to have the items push them out of bounds with extra force. The reason the extra force is needed is because the developers included a feature that warps players back in bounds if they fall into the void for too long. And with the extra distance from the push, the position you're warped to is updated so you arrive at the goblin with the key, saving about 3 seconds over a normal save clip. Shortly after, they arrive at the first load warp, which will teleport them above the cave further in the escape route. Then they save in another chair to set up a future load warp, 
And this is where things for Oblivion NPCs start to defy reality. A series of saves and load warps takes place where a previous save is loaded to preserve the effect of Adrenaline Rush. And then you walk through the ruined tunnel until you arrive at the room where the Emperor and his guards meet up with you, despite never having started the escort quest. So what's going on? Like the failsafe that was added to make Martin appear at the end of the game, a trigger volume exists in the door between the ruined tunnel and the main sewer that will teleport the Emperor and his guards to the room. And without it, all of this effort would be for naught. More load warps are then performed to get you outside of the room the Emperor is in, because the fun isn't over yet. We didn't come this far just to have to escort him the rest of the way. For an unknown reason, if you save and load while you're in a different room than the Emperor, the game will teleport him and the guards to their next destination. This is used to speed up their journey to the end of the tutorial quest, and when you catch up with them, they'll already be fighting the first assassin without you. But the main time save comes from repeating the exploit that has them teleport to their next checkpoint, until they come to the final room. Normally, you're supposed to fight a large number of assassins here, but because you teleport the Emperor, the trigger for them to spawn was never activated. So all that's left is to have one of the guards open a door, which puts you in the last leg of the sewers. You're probably wondering why we need the guard to open the door since we know save clips can get us through them, and there are two reasons. This particular door has no key, it can only be opened by the guard, and there aren't any known ways to glitch past it, so the escort mission needs to be completed. Now we're in the final part of the sewers, and a save clip followed by a load warp gets us to the exit. The tutorial sequence takes just under 3 minutes, cutting the time in half if it was done without any glitches, which just leaves getting to the door hidden in the temple. With the save clip trick, we don't need to build a paintbrush staircase or item jump. We can clip behind the intended door to reach the buried door. The end of the run is largely unchanged. Trigger the hitbox to start Martin on his path, go inside the temple to stop enemy combat, and then wait for him to arrive before triggering the end game credits for a final time of 2 minutes and 21 seconds. But it wouldn't be the last trick runners discovered. Recently, speedrunners have found that subscribing to my Patreon is a great trick for staying up to date on videos I'm working on and new discoveries in popular speedruns. Instead of being rewarded with time save, they get their names in the credits of videos I upload and some other great perks. Thanks for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.